So Cricket, how long have you played the sax? Why the soprano saxophone? Do you think you will ever play any other saxophone? You went to Berkeley College of Music? How did you lose your scholarship? Well, to begin answering the last question, it all started with a boy. Hello, my friend. Welcome back to my channel where we are changing the narrative. Life is better over 50. We ain't getting old. We're getting better. My name is Cricket williams B, and I am your travel companion on this journey in exploration of life over 50. In this video, I'm going to answer a few questions that I have come across regarding my saxophone journey. These are questions that have existed are started since the very beginning of me starting the channel. So, um, and I did answer each individual um, directly. However, just in case there's other people who have questions concerning my saxophone, I figured I would just throw it all right here <laughs> in the one video. So for those of you who are thinking to yourselves, she is not just starting the sax in her 50s. No. As I've mentioned in previous videos, I am returning to learning sax in my 50s. I started playing 40 years ago in the 10th grade and I was 14 years old when our band acquired five brand new soprano saxophones and my band director selected me to play one of them. I had that saxophone for about five to six months before it was stolen. Our marching band attended the Oktoberfest and we didn't get back until really, really late. And that was late at night. It was like two, three o'clock in the morning. While the instrument bus was being unloaded, I was standing on the landing of stairs leading to the band room, looking out this this big, huge window. And like I said, it was really late and no one but band members were around. My saxophone case had like a trillion stickers on it to distinguish it. As soon as I saw my case, I went running down to get it. And it took me about 15 seconds. It was like just really quick. And when I got there, it was gone. When I asked about it, the guys unloading the bus told me that they just took it off the bus and showed me where they put my case. I was devastated. And of course, I had to report the incident to my band director. And I ended up returning to the clarinet. So I had my speculations who took it. But... They were just speculations, like I had no proof. It was just really odd that prior to my saxophone disappearing, that one of the girls broke her, her soprano saxophone and had to go back to playing the clarinet. Then after the disappearance of my saxophone, out from nowhere, her sax is repaired and good as new. Well, that young lady was really tight with our section leader. I was pretty much a loner and I stayed to myself quiet. I was real quiet. And I could tell the section leader really didn't like me. She never liked me. I mean, she pretended to like me. One day I asked to see the newly fixed sacks and guess what? She actually let me <laughs> and the serial number was scraped off. Her response was, I know you think this is your sax, but blah, 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 blah. I just zoned out because I, I wasn't trying to hear that. So no, I'm not exactly a beginner on the saxophone. I feel as though that I'm pretty much at an intermediate level. When I got my first job after graduating from high school because I wasn't able to work during the school year, 
I took a year off before going to college and I bought my own soprano saxophone. Once I got my sax, I had about three months to prepare a scholarship tape to attend Berklee College of Music in Boston, Massachusetts. And I got in on a full scholarship, but I lost it. I didn't realize in order to keep my scholarship, I needed to perform. I spent all my free time with my boyfriend at the time, and I also had a job. I chose Berkeley, and when my boyfriend decided he was going to go to Berkeley too, I didn't want any distractions, so I decided to go to Ithaca College of Music in New York, but then he decided he would go to Ithaca instead. Somehow his plan shifted and he ended up at Berkeley with me because after he decided he was going to go to Ithaca, I decided to go to Berkeley. When I think about it now, why was I working? I never worked while I was in high school and I never worked during the school year. So I was very much distracted. After losing my scholarship, I felt my whole life was falling apart. I felt like a failure and that I let not only myself down, but I let my parents down. After that, life just happened. Children, marriage, divorce, jobs. Fast forward, here I am. It's been two years since I purchased my current saxophone. Look. I have so much to learn because I haven't really studied the sax since I left Berkeley back in 1988, 89. I've done some playing for a church I used to attend for about 10 years after leaving Berkeley, but I didn't practice or transcribe. The only time I picked up my sax was on Sunday morning. <laughs> After leaving that church, I wouldn't pick up my sax, but every once in a blue moon to play. Although I left the church back in 2002, the sax just never left me. It will always be a part of me and I really don't know how far I'll go on the saxophone. I'll go as far as I can. I just always want to be able to learn new things because I will always consider myself a student on my saxophone. So I do plan to pick up the tenor, maybe the alto. I also plan to pick the violin back up in a few years. That has its own separate story I've shared in another video. However, I can revisit that story in another video if you're interested in hearing it. I just love learning and I am just, like I said, forever a student of life. Life has taught me that whatever God has for me, it won't pass me by. Everything that happened didn't happen to me. It happened for me. Those were all just speed bumps for God to do the inner work within me. I am stronger, wiser, a more patient and confident version of myself. I remember back when my boys were young, my uncle told me, Cricket, when your children become grown, you will still be young enough to pursue what you'd like to do with your life. Right now, your job is to raise your children. I was thinking in my mind, uh, I'll be 45, almost 50 when that happens. And I will be too old. I was just really discouraged by that thought. Now I can say, Uncle Ron, you were right. 
Hopefully this video has answered all the questions I've received concerning my saxophone journey. And I really do pray that it inspires you to take action on some things you may have laid down yourself. As long as you are still here and you have the ability, why not just do it? Yes, yeah, stop putting it off. Because time passes swiftly, as you already know. So why not do right with the time you have now? Seize this moment and just, just do it. Okay, my friend. Thanks so much for watching. I look forward to sharing with you on my next video. In the meantime, know that your latter days are greater, far greater than your former. You ain't getting old. You're getting better. Love you much.